Welcome back to our video module on mechanics of materials. In our previous video, we looked at the relationship between the deformation and the total length. And we found that the ratio between the two, that proportion, is seen as the strain. Now I want to take a look at our original problem where we had some applied force and then some reaction force. Let's imagine now that we're, instead of keeping those forces like that, we're going to apply a slightly different force, a larger force, some larger, we'll call it, force applied to, and so we have some sort of larger reaction force, force reaction to. And as a result, we have a strain that now, that, that material, it's acting like a spring, so it's going, to, it's going to stretch a little bit more. You're going to have some modified delta. Now, the original length is the same. It's just the delta that's changed. So up here, in our strain equation, we're going to see the strain change. We increase the force, and the strain itself will change. Why is that? Today we're going to take a look at the relationship between stress and strain to understand it at an intuitive level. So one of the things that we talked about on our previous module, and something that kind of we see here is that materials, most materials, act like springs. So if we wanted to find the relationship, say, with position and force on a spring, we know that as the force increases, the deformation of the spring from the equilibrium position is x. And in most materials, we see some sort of linear fashion, or at least we like thinking of it that way. We have a similar feel with the relationship between stress and strain. You can imagine that because we're looking at the inside of the material, our main concern is not force, but stress, which is force per unit area. And likewise, we're not so concerned about the total distance as we are about the strain or deformation over total length. And if we look at a typical material here, we can imagine that if this thing right here is going to act like a spring, we double the force and we double the deformation. This, we'd have a linear relationship between the stress and the strain. We can somewhat make sense of this graph knowing that in order for some sort of particle, some sort of bar, to have an increase in the strain, it would likewise have to have some sort of increase in the stress experienced. Usually, we see this by increasing in the force. This relationship is critical to understanding how materials react to applied forces and hence stresses experienced inside the material. We'll spend the next several videos taking a much closer look at this graph right here. Thank you and I hope this time has given you a good basic intuitive feel of the relationship between stress and strain.